Australia and Austria, Spain, Italy, and other parts of the United States, and I might even be missing a few countries, and other countries later on in the weekend. So let's get our seminar program started with M.G. Brown, reporter and uh, North American Bureau Chief for <laughs> Pinball News. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate all you ladies and gentlemen being here today. Um, we're going to do something a little different that generally speaking you don't do at Expo. Uh, a, a lot of the um, seminars at Expo are product informa information or introductions, uh, technical and so forth. And what we're going to focus on today is travel. What my wife and I do, um, when and my wife is quite a traveler and has talked me into traveling more, I traveled a lot for my job in the past. I was uh, with the international division of a very large um, multinational pharmaceutical and uh, uh, tech company in the northern suburbs of Chicago for quite a long time and I did a lot of traveling and uh, I just didn't want to travel anymore after Carrie and I got married and she talked me into traveling more. But what we try to do is to visit the arcades and arcade-ish things that are on our travel destination. And we capture the information and what I do is I used to have a blog that I published this stuff on and, and now I've uh, combined with Martin because he has a larger reach and uh, I share that with the pinball community. Um, I'd like to make sure that you understand that none of these uh, recommendations that we're going to give you today or reviews have been paid for. We do not accept anything in the way of free anything from the people that we visit. We pay for our own games. If we want a t-shirt, we pay for our own t-shirt. Um, we do accept if we're invited to present at a show, free admission to the show, obviously, but nothing of tangible value. Uh, we don't want them to influence us in any way in what we have to say. There is a, a story about a site that we visited in Indianapolis, Indiana, which will remain nameless, um, that I was going around taking pictures and uh, the manager approached me and he said, are you doing something in particular? And I said, yes, I'm gathering information for a publication and um, we're gonna publish a story on your site. And he said, you're gonna have to run that through our publicity department first. Uh, because we will not allow you to publish anything about our location without approval. And Exactly. And what I said to him is, I said, okay. And I promptly stopped taking photos and never published anything about their site. So um, one more little housekeeping thing. I have a list up here. If you would care to have a copy of this presentation, I will email it to you in a PDF format. Um, a lot of the locations that we talk about today, I just mentioned the name of the location and not the address and so forth. In, uh, in the Atlanta presentation, I had a QR code up here where you could scan that and get the information on the site. No one cared to do that, so I just took them off the, you know, we we're extraneous at that point. So, um, like I say, I do work for Martin. And uh, we, um, we have this publication called Pinball News that is uh, the most up-to-date source of information for the industry. Um, Martin takes a great deal of pain to make sure that this is up-to-date. Um, with his permission, I am saying that we are looking for writers. Um, come up and get a, one of Martin's business cards if you'd care to, uh, and introduce yourself after the presentation. But we'd love to talk to you. And uh, generally speaking, we're looking, I, I'm gonna say this without having cleared it with Martin, but we'd like to really to get someone in the Far East to cover the Japan and China scene, if at all possible. So think about that. Uh, what is pinball news? We cover the major international pinball. Oh, what I was going to say is that I use 
the IBM type format to pre present. If anyone is familiar with that, that's what I'm going to be doing today uh, because my background is in IT. So um, we, we cover the major international pinball shows and tournaments, manufacture announcements of upcoming games, repair and game enhancement how-to, diary of upcoming events, links to pinball manufacturer sites, pinball association sites, and a lot more. Uh, any games that are listed on a, on a review on my site, uh, or on Pinball News rather, are, excuse me, the site reviews in this presentation rather, um, are, the, they would list any games or show any games, that was the day that we visited. The pinball map has the latest and greatest listing of any games that are on any site. And uh, you can find them on the app, uh, on pinball map or on browser. Okay, the subject of this presentation is arcade tourism. And I've kind of introduced that to you. Um, we're going to have a little 15 minute Q&A session. I've got a lot of information to cover afterwards. If you could hold your questions, I'd really appreciate that. Something recently has come about called agrotourism. It combines the essential elements of tourism and agriculture industries. It attracts members of the public to visit agricultural operations. It is designed to increase farm income and provides recreation, entertainment, and or educational experiences to the visitor. In a more practical sense, arcade tourism is planning and including visits to local arcades and museums during your vacation or other trips. So let's start visiting around the United States, starting with the area of Chicago. And as I talked to uh, a gentleman earlier today, we generally do not cover the well-known arcades. We don't write an article about Logan or Interium or anything like that. We go to the smaller locations that are not well known and we also talk about any food service that they have any drinks that they serve anything that's unusual about them so let's begin in the lakeview area of chicago and the map indicates um, where we are and where the site is there is a great place called replay burb beer and bourbon in the Lakeview area of Chicago. They have an extensive selection of spirits featuring bourbons, and they have uh, a, a large number of vintage stand-up arcade games that are all for, on free play. They have a small number of pinballs in the back, and they also have local craft beers. Uh, if you are a bourbon, whiskey, or scotch lover, they have 56 different varieties of those spirits available for you to try. And they also have specialty cocktails that are made with those. Some of them are in a gaming theme. Uh, they also have a kitchen and sandwiches and other entrees are available. They have 18 vintage arcade games on free play and they rotate in and out the pinballs, but I'm sure that you will have a great time. Their, their uh, philosophy and their slogan is get ready to level up your night. Uh, events that they're having uh, coming up is every Wednesday is karaoke night, pumpkin carving and dog costume contest, and what they call the let's get bubbly happy hour weekends. Uh, these are all on their website if you want to get some more details and I'll kind of go through them fast because we have a lot to cover. Uh, they do the Monday reset. They have the daily specials uh, and what they call Sindustry Sundays, which is, I guess, people that are in the uh, entertainment business. There's another place that I'm going to talk about here shortly that they have a Sindustry night as well. Um, in Mundelein, Illinois, we have all heard that there's a certain, um, I think it's Giordano's, has the best Chicago style pizza in the Chicagoland area. We have found that is not correct. This little bar and pub in Mundelein 
has the best pizza that we've ever put a lip to, and we're kind of pizza snobs. But I realize that everybody's concept of good pizza is different. So uh, I would advise you, if you have time during Ex Expo and you're a visitor, to visit Bill's Pub. It's a fabulous experience. Even if you don't order the pizza, they have some very good sandwiches. They have a very uh, cozy uh, kind of a Wisconsin hunting lodge type theme. Uh, if you are allergic to peanuts, please do not go to any of the Bill's Pub locations. There's a, a satellite location now because they have bowls of free peanuts on the table and people throw the shells on the floor. So if you're allergic to peanuts or those type of products, don't go. Uh, their crust is quite unique. Uh, you'd, I don't even know how to begin to describe it other than it's very tasty and unique. They do have sandwiches, a great beer selection, and so forth. So please uh, check out their website if you want some more information. Uh, this shows you a little bit of the interior. Um, they had a much larger arcade presence before it became legal in Northern Illinois to have adult gaming, which is also known as gambling. Uh, they took about half of the arcade space and they have uh, slot machines and so forth in there now. But they still have a good sized uh, arcade that I would in encourage you to visit. Uh, Portillo's Gurney. How many people have ever heard of or gone to a Portillo's in the Chicagoland area too? Well, we took Martin the other day, so I know for sure. Portillo's is uh, a gentleman, a local gentleman in Chicago, uh, started what he called the dog house in a trailer. I believe it was in Villa Park, Villa Park, with an $1,100 initial stake. He recently sold the uh, uh, entire Portillo's restaurant uh, empire, I think it was for $3 billion to a conglomerate of investors. Um, they have some wonderful food, though. And if you want to experience the Chicago-style hot dog and you don't want to go down to Maxwell Street, they do probably the best Chicago hot dog outside of, uh, of Maxwell Street. Uh, the reason that it's included in this program is the Gurney location is very near WMS Electronics' former uh, warehouse and manufacturing operations also known as Williams, William Valley Williams, once upon a time, and I'm going to go back here. They have a number of antique play fields and so forth and a Chicago-style theme for the interior of the restaurant. It's quite an experience just to walk in there and look at all of the wonderful things that are on the walls. And like I say, this is a very sad thing because this is an abandoned building now uh, in that area. Now I'm going to give a little caveat here. I'm, I was very hesitant to include this slide in this presentation because there are a number of wonderful dealers and individuals selling pinball and other games here at the Expo. ABT Electronics sells everything and anything that you could possibly think of as far as consumer electronics, including pinball games from the major manufacturers. Please do not go to ABT Electronics and buy your pinball. They have them available for play, and they have the latest ones from Jersey Jack uh, and Stern available for, for play. Go and play the pinballs and look at the Golden Tee and check out the uh, uh, pool tables while your wife buys a new refrigerator. Please don't buy your pinballs from them but know that they exist and that it's, a, it's just a fantastic mega store. And I'm gonna go back a, a slide here. Pardon me, I went back too many. This is the interior of the store. It's about the size of a good uh, in, uh, enclosed mall. Uh, they have each one of these little cubbies here is a specialty like cameras or TVs or stereo systems and they literally carry everything. 
you know, you will not be disappointed. And one of the things that has kept them in business is that they provide free setup and that they provide free delivery and all after sale servicing. Uh, you don't, if you buy a refrigerator there and it, it dies within the first week, they'll come out and get it and give you another one. Their customer, after the sale customer service is excellent. They also have a site on their page where they have all the latest manufacturer videos. If you're wanting to see the X-Men a demo that uh, Stern put out recently, go to the ABT Electronics page and the videos. Okay, a gentleman in, uh, earlier, I believe, was from Portal Pinball, and he was asking me about this. This is in the uh, western suburbs of Atlanta in Lithia Springs. The two brothers um, own a Airbnb, and one of the amenities is that they have a tiny house that they rent out next to their saltwater pool, where they also show movies and, and videos on weekends uh, in a kind of a community setting. This is the, the rental property, again. They have a very strong Wi-Fi system that comes from the house. Um, but what does this have to do with, I kind of got ahead of myself. They have their own private uh, arcade that has, in addition to pinball, they have other arcade games and some wonderful arcade art on the walls. Um, uh, 1,250 square feet. If it was not a, an Airbnb, it would also be one of Greater Atlanta's largest and most diverse arcades, according to what they say. Um, there are off over 50 free play games in their, um, their, their arcade, and they're in excellent, excellent, excellent condition. They also have driving games and games of skill. And this is Donald Hopkins, who is the fellow that, can we hold the questions later? Um, this is Donald Hopkins, who uh, is your, your host. Okay, I was talking earlier, and I couldn't remember the name of it, but Manuel's Tavern is in uh, the Ponce Highland area. Um, this is a area where a lot of the local politicians will go to Manuel's and uh, announce their candidacy or announce some part of their uh, political affiliation. Um, this Manuel's is unique in many ways. Esquire magazine called it one of the best bars in the United States. And as you can see, there's a, a picture of John F. Kennedy there. Um, they've been in the same location in Atlanta Midtown since 1956. He modeled it on the taverns that he had visited while he was stationed in England during the Second World War. He filled the tavern with salvaged furnishings, mismatched chairs and tables, booths, lighting fixtures, wall paneling, from grand old homes and the stores in the Atlanta area that were scheduled for demolition. Manuel's is the home of this unique stadium dog, and uh, here's one that I ordered and, and consumed with great difficulty. Uh, if you order it with everything, it includes chili, sauerkraut, cheese sauce, coleslaw, chopped onion, a pickle spear, relish, and other things that I couldn't identify. There are so many toppings on the hot dog that you cannot pick it up. You have to eat it with a knife and fork. But what does that have to do with anything? There's our former President Obama playing sharps darts there at Manuel's. And they have uh, some nice uh, pinball. I think they had three the last time that we visited. This was a few years ago, so I'm sure they have some more current games now. Uh, we also visited another Atlanta, uh, in Atlanta in Illinois, which is the home of the Route 66 Arcade Museum. They were unfortunately closed the day that we visited, so I don't have any interior photos. But uh, I would recommend that you, if you're in that area, you stop by Atlanta, Illinois, and visit the Route 66 Arcade Museum. Uh, a little bit north of uh, the Route 66 Arcade Museum is Arcadia, 
which is a America's Playable Arcade Museum. And uh, this is the exterior. Uh, this is the arcade itself. This is actually a Airbnb, and this is actually what they call Arcadia Suites, which are available for parties and also available for rental as overnight for overnight stays. Uh, they, the same people own the Pinball Palace, which used to be a bank. They have some very unique uh, arcade games and uh, pinballs in both locations. He also has a, uh, Mr. Yates, who is the owner, has walls and walls and walls of great video game art, which is very enjoyable. And you might recognize this pr picture. Stand up, Terry. This is my uh, lovely assistant and bride, Terry Brown, who was also named Brown before I ma married her. But uh, they have a, a lounge area for any adults that might be uh, wanting to just take a break while their children play. And uh, they have some vintage uh, um, stereo equipment there as well. We visited Panama City, Florida a couple of years ago and visited the Point Break Arcade, which this is the exterior of the arcade and the interior. They are a lovely place to visit if you're having a bad day in Florida and the weather is terrible. I would highly recommend that you visit them there. It's a, it's a pay once, play all day sort of thing. They also have monthly passes. Um, it's fifteen dollars, and if you want unlimited access for a month, it's ninety. They also have a great selection of beer, and as their sign says, made for those th who love pinball and beer. Uh, they have a mind-boggling selection of bottled and craft beers, as well as craft sodas available for purchase. But they do not have a kitchen. They have a number of different. Uh, imported Japanese driving games, uh, always the latest pinballs, um, well worth it uh, if you're in the neighborhood. We're, we moved from the Chicago area to Tennessee to avoid the tax situation that we have here in, this, in the Chicago regional area. And uh, we live in Tennessee now in, the, in a more of a relaxed rural setting. But every once in a while we get to the city, big city of Knoxville and visit Sutri's High Gravity Tavern, which uh, they also have quite a nice arcade room uh, there. Uh, does anyone know who Sutri is? No one? Well, I'll tell you here in a minute. Sutri's and Harrogate's are named after characters featured in a 1979 best-selling novel written by well-known author Cormac McCarthy. Much of the activity in the story takes place in and around the Knoxville Gay Street neighborhood in 1950, where the, the tavern is located today. Roger Ebert was quoted after reading the book as saying, I begin to live through this desperate man's sad life. And uh, Sutri was a gentleman who was a, from a very wealthy family who became dis disenchanted with the wealthy life. They have a great selection of games. They're all coin operated, unfortunately. And they have some wonderful, wonderful food there, including the only place that I've ever been to that's that calls itself a bar that had ram wonderful gourmet ramen. The uh, bars are made from old pinball play fields and are electrified and lit up. They're very nice. Uh, they also have a wall dedicated to the Miracle on Ice, where the United States beat the Russians, and also the Chicago Blackhawks. Why would somebody in um, Knoxville be interested in the Blackhawks? They also have um, uh, Super Checks Hockey. Uh, recently, we visited uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, in fi the Five Points area, the Bang Back pinball lounge, which is fair, reasonably new, but is certainly worth your time to visit if you are in the Columbia area. 
I was not familiar with Columbia before I visited uh, recently, and I was very impressed with the city of Columbia. It's a it's a um, university town. It has a lot of diversity. They have a jazz fest once a year that is fabulous, free uh, uh, for all comers. So um, if you're in the Columbia area, stop by and check out Bang Bang. They have an incredible bar. Uh, I sent uh, the manager a sticker to put here for pinball news. Uh, it was this is I try to stay under the radar so people don't know what I look like. Um, only recently have I been coming out and saying here I am and do presentations. And the two managers, they were just at the time of shift, changing shift. They recognized me for some unknown reason and uh, helped me a lot with gathering information. Here's the uh, game floor and some of the games that they had earlier this year. They had just gotten Pulp Fiction. Um, they also have special events. Um, during this past summer, they did uh, Tuesday's Son, Son of a Beach. Uh, uh, and uh, they also, as I said, they have uh, in industry free, free play Mondays. And uh, these are all on the website. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly here. But you'll be able to pick up uh, these on their website. They also have a children's league, which is kind of unique, called the Little Flippers. Uh, which I thought was kind of cool. And they are also home to um, the uh, ladies' uh, uh, pinball league that I have been drawing. The Bells and Chimes, uh, they, Thursday they host the Bells and Chimes, which is the ladies' pinball league. They have a fantastic on-site kitchen with a number of wonderful things to eat and to complement your drink experience. Uh, the Five Points Burger Buster which is here, is an absolutely ridiculous um, sandwich that you probably could share amongst three people if you so chose to. But uh, very delicious food and well worth it. Now we're going to jump uh, to Oahu, Hawaii's North Shore, which is up here. Uh, and we had our son was in the military and was stationed in Hawaii for a few years. So um, we, of course, had to go see the grandkids. I mean, it's our duty as, a, as the uh, parents to see the grandkids. So we stopped at Jerry's Pizza Mill on the North Shore. And the North Shore right here is where they have all the surfing, con surfing contests in Hawaii. So uh, Haleiwa, which is where we were staying, is where they have the best surf. and. Uh, beautiful beaches and so forth but that has nothing to do with pinball other than if you like pizza they have good pizza they also have a um, an arcade room with a number of games and martin pointed out to me that this back glass is somewhat unique it really being a poster from the movie hook uh, there are only five places on all of oahu that have pinball available to the public uh, and Jerry's is one. I was told by a fellow that has an arcade on another one of the islands of Hawaii that that is because Hawaii in general has a very high humidity and the salt water uh, wreaks havoc on the circuitry in the pinball games. Uh, I'd like to, before we get into questions, I'd like to go over one more thing, if you wouldn't mind, please. This is personal for me, uh, and I would appreciate it if you would would indulge me just for a moment here. Um, well, I had this uh, I had this up here, but I guess I don't anymore. Let's see. It'll tell me take it. Here we go. Uh, I think everyone in the room probably knows Lyman S. Sheets Jr who was a figure and well-known uh, fellow uh, in the pinball community. And sadly, he committed suicide a few years ago. Uh, I created this Wikipedia page to remember Lyman because I believe that he was quite a character and an interesting fellow. 
and I was told by the management at Wikipedia that Lyman S. Sheets Jr. was not a significant enough person to have their own Wikipedia page. So on um, Hinside, we asked for an appeal for people to please put additional information about Lyman on um, the uh, Wikipedia page and also to visit. Uh, if you can please help us with that so that this is not taken down, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, we just need visitors and we need anybody who has any little snippets of information about Lyman uh, to please help us um, keep this page up. I tried to put up some other uh, information about uh, different personalities in the pinball and, and arcade community and in each case they were taken down because the people were considered to be not significant enough to for Wikipedia to, to uh, uh, be concerned with. But now we have uh, a little space for questions and I know there was one gentleman who had qu a question for me and I appreciate the fact that you let me get through my presentation before you asked it. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. You, you, must, you must be a guest, either um, invited to a party, which they do have sometimes, uh, or be, you must be staying on the property as a paying guest. Uh, to use the arcade. The arcade is not open to the public. I'm, uh, that's, that isn't what, what I chose. That's what they have chosen to do. And actually the entrance is not facing any public access roads or anything. You have to, you have to literally come through their house, which is also on the property, to get to the Airbnb and also to the arcade. So that's what they have chosen to do and they probably have a good reason for it. And, you know, if you have issue with that, I guess you have to talk to them. But um, I'm sorry, that's a, probably not the answer you want. <laughs> we, we called ahead and said, we'd like to come and visit you and for an article uh, in Pinball News, and they were able to meet us and let us in. Now, if you called them and said, you know, I have interest in looking at your property for a future stay. They might let you walk around and look, but that would be how I would approach it. Okay, did I answer your question? Okay, anyone else? Yes, sir. Well, you're gonna have to talk to the boss there. I, I know we're gonna head back to Florida in next April for our 10th wedding anniversary. We stayed together for 10 years, and we've had little disagreements over the way, but generally speaking, I feel I'm a very lucky man to uh, be in this relationship. Uh, do you have want to say anything, dear? Is that microphone live? Martin, is Hello. that microphone live? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I got one for you. So we are planning a trip to Helen, Georgia. I don't know, honey, is there any pinball in I Helen? I don't think there's any pinball in well, Helen, maybe, Georgia. Maybe we should encourage the slot car place to put in some pinball machines. Uh, well, I'll talk to them about it. They could put any uh, uh, Hot Wheels in. That would be cool. Yeah. So our trip to Florida, we're doing a month-long combining cruise, and his bucket list is full of car museums. So I imagine that we'll be hitting some pinball arcades in between car museums and things like that. If we all find around any, the if state we of run into anything in a lot of these places we find by accident. Yes. Well, yeah. But um, we'd be ha th typically we post our stuff on pinball news and uh, Martin is very helpful with edit making sure I don't have any words that I shouldn't have in there. Um, so ke just keep an eye on pinball news, and uh, hopefully we'll have some new material soon. Um, anyone else? Uh, please, if you want a copy of the presentation, please leave me your email up here. Otherwise, uh, I don't have anything more. Just enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming and listening to my spiel.